I'm walking on the street I grew up on, Independence Street. I just remember riding my bike up and down the street and running around in my friends' yards and sleepovers and playing hopscotch and playing in the rain puddles on the streets. So you were safe. My parents would let me ride my bike all over. This road really just reminds me of childhood. On February 25th, 2005, um, when I found out my father was arrested, this place became not my home and no one ever slept in my house again. Just need something to bridge, bridge the gap from that. You okay? Yeah. Again, just yeah. to help you with your makeup. Are we, are we good? Everybody's yes, rolling? We're speeding. It's been more than a decade since your life, as you knew it, changed forever. What do you remember about that day? It was a normal day. I had slept in. I was substitute teaching, and I would just took the day off. And then there's a knock on my door. So I'm already thinking, like, who's this person, you know, in, in my apartment building? And then he said he was the FBI. Is there any reason you should even expect the FBI no, to be at your home? No, no. What does he say exactly? He asked, do you know who BTK is? I was like, you mean the person that's wanted for murders back in Kansas? And then he says, your dad has been arrested as BTK. And I was like, I think I'm going to pass out. He calls himself the BTK Strangler and promises to kill again. BTK's brutal crimes shocked Wichita. The most infamous unsolved serial killing spree in Wichita history. BTK stood for bind, torture, kill, and that was his M.O. Three letters which can touch off memories for anyone who lived in Wichita during the 1970s. BTK emerged in 1974. When BTK came forward, everybody's life changed. It was really part of Wichita's history. The BTK killings changed the way people lived in Wichita. It changed Wichita from a sleepy little friendly town into a place in a city where you now lock your door and you check your phone to make sure you have a dial tone. They're asking that anyone with information on this case please call our Crime Stoppers line. The body was discovered here. I think we'll solve the crime. The question is, when will we solve the crime? BTK was a monster who killed a total of 10 people, two of those children, in cold blood. This was a serial killer who got away with it for 30 years. That's very rare. There was somebody out there targeting women and children. BTK was the boogeyman made real. He would be driving down the street, and he would see a woman walking or a woman on the front porch, and he would look at her, and he would say, she's next. So the killings were random. He would break into someone's home, hide in a closet, wait hours until they were fast asleep, and then attack. To this day, I still check inside the closets, under the bed, behind the shower curtain when I'm in unfamiliar territory. You never knew when he was going to show up, and you never knew where he was going to be next. People were really frightened. This is one of the most challenging cases I've ever been involved with. None of the women were actually physically sexually assaulted. What he wanted was the image of a bound woman. He killed in the 70s proficiently, and then stopped, it seemed. It became almost mythology. This figure came, he killed a bunch of people, and then he left. It was kind of slipping into history when in 2004, a mailing came and there was no question who it was from. Police in Wichita, Kansas, are investigating the possible return of a serial, serial killer, killer who calls himself BTK resurfaces after 25 years. This is Cake News. Good evening. We have exclusive details. A new communication that could be from the serial killer. We were all scared to death to see if he was going to kill again. And was I going to be the next victim? It scares me to be out by myself anymore. For the second time in just more than a week, another possible communication from BTK arrives here at our studios. He thrived on the publicity, and I think he thrived on scaring the heck out of everybody in the city. We begin tonight with breaking news in the case. BTK is arrested. His hunger for publicity seems to have done him in. We have learned that Raider has been charged with 10 counts now of first-degree murder. He was living a double life. 
here in Wichita. Residents are still trying to digest the fact that a possible serial killer lived among them. Nobody would have imagined this church leader, this father, this good husband, as somebody that could even contemplate the murders that he committed. BTK was literally the guy next door with a wife and two kids. Everybody wanted to talk to the family members. Everybody did. How do you process this earth-shattering news? You don't. I said, can I call my husband? He needs to come home. All this stuff is running through my head where I'm like, did, did somebody get hurt or like, but why would it be the FBI? And so when I, when I get home, I remember him saying, have you heard about the BTK, like the serial killer? We're pretty sure like he's the guy, like we got the guy. I was trying to almost alibi my father. I was like, my father's a good guy. He's Boy Scout leader president of the church. I'm like, you've got the wrong man because you don't believe it's true and you don't want it to be true and you know your father's not capable, the father you know is not capable of any of this. Were you worried at that point that your mom was somehow involved in this as well? No, I never imagined that my mom was involved in anything bad. I was very worried about her and wanted to call her and let her know I was okay and I wanted to know how my brother was doing. He was stationed in Connecticut with the Navy and so, like, I wasn't able to talk to my mom or my brother till like, six or seven hours after the arrest. When you first heard her voice on the phone? Just heartbreaking. Like, you could just hear her break, like, just utter grief and loss. Well, when Paula Rada found out, she was shocked in complete disbelief. How is Mrs. Rader doing? She's having a very difficult time with all of this, uh, in a shock, um, just unbelievable totally in disbelief. Police are being very tight-lipped about the evidence against him, but there are reports the suspect is confessing to many of the murders. When did you type this? This? Uh, well, probably would help to have a calendar. So you're trying to deny this, and your father is confessing to being a serial killer. Right. I was like, what is he confessing to? You know, you're just so, like, not with it. You're like, what is he confessing to? And he's like, oh, he's confessing to the crimes. After your dad's arrest, you actually started Googling, trying to see what you can find out about this killer. I made a really huge mistake to go Google BTK. 